Hi, welcome to the Pay TV Innovation Forum webinar. We start because we have guests join having joined in. <coughs> uh, so we have about 30 40 minutes for a presentation of key findings from the program, and then we'll have a QA session at the end. Uh, all the attendees, please post your questions in the on chat box, and we'll uh, try to answer them at the very end. Uh, today we're joined by uh, three guests. So uh, John was here, uh, Magic Partner at NPM, Simon Judel, uh, Senior Director of Product Marketing at Nagra, and we have our special guest, uh, the industry, Sean Gokar, and Chief New Business Innovation in the chat. Welcome, everyone. Just quickly introduce the program. Absolutely. Thank uh, you, everyone. And um, on behalf of Nagro, which is the sponsor of the uh, PT Innovation Forum, I'd like to uh, to tell a bit more about this uh, program, why we decided to launch it earlier this year, and what were the objectives uh, for uh, 2016. First of all, the um, Innovation Forum is really uh, an industry-wide initiative that we have uh, designed for the PTV industry and, uh, and, and the, with the objective of understanding how innovative the industry is and uh, identifying as well uh, through Benchmark, who are the innovation leaders today, and, um, and look at the characteristics and capabilities that distinguish these players from other uh, um, operators uh, in the industry at a worldwide level. So we look at different regions of the world and the, uh, we compared as well these regions between each other. Um, one objectives are obviously uh, to find out what opportunities are opening up for service providers, determining uh, some of the priorities and next steps uh, to take to pursue them and make sure that the industry stays competitive and is growing in the years to come. Uh, as many of you have probably found out, uh, before signing up for this webinar, we have published the, uh, the findings of our, uh, of our research, the research conducted by uh, MTM London, uh, on the uh, website, so dtv.com slash ptvif, uh, where you'll find the, uh, the final uh, global report, as well as uh, four regional reports and uh, interview, uh, interviews of uh, industry leaders that we've also published um, on, uh, on that website. So, move on next uh, slide. We'd like to actually uh, thank all the contributors to this uh, research program. We've made it very interactive with uh, six sessions, uh, interactive sessions run in different cities around the world, uh, bringing together over 100 people, plus in total 200 that were interviewed or surveyed uh, throughout the uh, uh, the, the, the Q&Q3 period of this year, uh, and that includes uh, contributors from all major service providers and, and major players in the, uh, in the OTT space uh, around the world in different parts of the, of, uh, uh, of, uh, the planet and making sure that we had input from the different uh, players uh, uh, geographies. To tell now a little bit more about how we designed this program, uh, first of all, we wanted to identify really the drivers of change and, uh, and the innovation challenges that, uh, that the PTV service providers uh, face. And to do this, we've gone through basically uh, an analysis of the service provider existing business models and new ones that are being uh, adopted. And also looked at the different opportunities and, and, uh, and really, uh, dealing a set of questions and uh, interaction questions for industry professionals so we could capture uh, that site and uh, determine really uh, where we stand in terms of innovation and growth as of today and where we will be over the next five years. I'd like now to ask uh, John Watts from, uh, from NTM to tell you more about the uh, actual uh, process we went through and some of the, uh, the points concerning uh, innovation, definition, and, and what we were looking for, and provide you an overview as well as some of the, uh, the key findings of the program. Thanks, Simon. 
Um, that's really helpful. And hello, everybody. Um, we're delighted that you've joined us for the webinar. I'm going to now talk us through some of the findings from the research and analysis. Uh, and I'll bring um, Simon and our guest Prashant at certain moments to give us their views and to contribute to their experiences. But to start with, how have we defined innovation? Um, it's a, a complicated um, issue or theme. Um, there are many different definitions of innovation across industry. Um, the most famous definitions, obviously, um, see innovation as something profoundly disruptive. We a slightly different approach. Um, we've had to define innovation as the development of viable new offerings, customer-facing offerings that contribute some sort of value to the end. Enterprise. These may be um, breakthrough innovations, but they may also be incremental or evolutionary, things that build on previous advances that the industry has brought to market, um, but add them, evolve them, take them in new directions or places. We use this definition because our hypothesis is, for the pay industry at least, that the creation of viable new offerings will be one of the key means of unlocking growth in the future. Obviously, there are lots of innovation opportunities within the enterprise. Things can deliver efficiency, better ways of working. These have been our focus for the stage of the program. Um, we focus very much on products and services that can generate revenues, reduce costs perhaps, um, but deliver really back to the enterprise in a customer facing way. So, why innovation? Becoming more important to the industry. We think from the research that there are three main reasons. The first is that growth for many TV businesses around the world is becoming more challenging. In the survey, we asked pay TV industry executives how they rated the growth prospects for their business during the course of the next three to five years. As you can see, less than 10% anticipate strong growth during this period. The large majority see only moderate growth or little or no growth during the next five years or so. That means there's a huge incentive to start innovating and finding new opportunities to grow the pay TV business. The second reason is the growing threat of disruptive competition. So 83% of industry executives in our survey agree with the statement that competition in the pay TV industry is set to increase dramatically. We have competition coming from two different directions for many companies. We have telcos dramatically entering the pay TV market around the world now. Indeed, I think it's fair to say that the two industries have well and truly converged at this point. And these are companies that are often meant to subsidize their investments in pay TV, the provision of telecom services, to really move the dial when it comes to changing the industry. At this scale, we have many of the major global OTT service providers, um, companies like Netflix. Um, and businesses across different regions and markets who have often disrupted the markets they enter, offering low cost access to film these services. A big driver is consumer expectations. These services we mentioned earlier, other experiences, particularly from consumers who've accessed the internet, mean that consumers have really changed their expectations when it comes to thinking about content, functionality, and price. They expect to see significant change and improvements, which is getting better over time. And all of these means that pay TV providers are having to innovate much more intensively to remain competitive, continue to delight and excite their customers, and to grow in more challenging markets. So, given these drivers, um, an unsurprising 82% of executives see innovation as either their number one priority or as a top three priority their business um, across our sample of paid executives. In other industries, these figures um, vary, um, they vary widely. Um, this clearly suggests to us that pay TV providers um, are seeing innovation as one of the most important priorities to their businesses going forward. Only 2% is not important, uh, which is significantly smaller than many other industries. Then about um, uh, innovation. The other big important factor to think is that not only is innovation becoming more important, it's also becoming more achievable. So if you think back 20 years or so um, to when pay was in a very different state um, state it was in today, um, we find three things that are very important. First of all, platforms were genuinely much less flexible than they are today. Um, we've seen over the 
course of the last 10 years, platforms become much more susceptible to innovation. Um, it's easy to innovate and to develop new products and services on platforms than it used to be. Secondly, the barrier that held back many PTC companies was their footprint. So companies were unable to make a return from their investment in new products and services outside of their own often very limited footprint. However, the dramatic growth of broadband has retained really the dial on that. It means that companies can address customers in other areas or other parts of the market, giving them a greater opportunity to generate a return and an opportunity to bring new customers um, to their platforms. Third, scale. With a real wave of consolidation across the industry in the course of the last three years, and now we're going to see as we go through the analysis, um, scale is incredibly important. Um, it means that companies can generate significant returns, it allows them to fund investment in R&D, and to have teams developing new products, which would be much more difficult um, in other circumstances when companies were smaller. Simon, do you want to come in at this point and just give us some insights about what not is seeing across the industry in terms of innovation drivers and capabilities? Absolutely. Uh, from our perspective, as, uh, as really a specialist in uh, user experience and content protection technologies, we, we've definitely noticed a, uh, an increase in, in investment in, uh, in developing new generation platforms that uh, answer some of the needs in terms of uh, reaching more consumer uh, devices, more screens, and, uh, and developing service offerings across a broad range of, uh, of devices. And uh, as well as uh, the option uh, by a vast majority of the players of uh, IP technologies and cloud technologies to, uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, create the, uh, the, the distribution of content across all these screens and also to gain uh, more agility in terms of uh, deploying new solutions faster and bring new innovative services to, uh, to consumers. So definitely, uh, what we've heard and listened through um, the uh, the research program is also what we uh, we see happening uh, day to day basis as a vendor working with uh, some of the largest BTV uh, service providers uh, around around the world. So, what framework have we used for thinking about innovation? Um, so we put together and tested very extensively a three stage framework to help think about the innovation landscape the pay to the industry. And I'll just take you through that now very quickly, starting from the far left. So far left, we have TV platform innovations. So opportunities for pay TV providers to do differently or better on their core set-top box platform, laying the end-to-end -end infrastructure they put in place to bring content in consumers' households, typically via set-top box, of course. So we've looked at things like new ways to price and pitch content, We've looked at advanced sets of box functionalities, things like recommendations, personalization, uh, control, and so on. And then we've looked at um, new types of content offering on the set-top box. So providers bringing things like Netflix or YouTube, investing in things like VR or gaming to re-innovate the content that's actually on the platform. Or we have online services. So operators looking to extend their reach or to add value to their consumers in um, by delivering services over the open internet. And we've looked at three main areas of opportunity in this space. First of all, standalone OTT offerings, which we're now seeing proliferating across the industry. Secondly, TV everywhere offerings, so extending reach of traditional pay TV services across different platforms and devices. And then lastly, app-based pay TV or boxless pay TV as it's sometimes called. And then the third main area we've looked at um, is adjacencies. So large additional opportunities where providers can extend their current product or service mix to address new opportunities. So things like um, advanced advertising or leveraging data to add value to channels or broadcasters or to attribution, for example, when it comes to advanced advertising. Things like internet of things or smart home applications. So developing home hub type services, and then finally the delivery of B2B content and technology services, the sorts of things that large businesses like Comcast Technology Solutions Unit are now doing as they take their expertise and look to apply it more widely. We test this framework uh, with pay TV executives around the world in the seminar series that Simon mentioned, and think about a helpful way of categorizing the different 
business opportunities. Next, um, our next is Prashant Tan here. Uh, Prashant, you're the Chief New Business and Innovation Officer at Indosat. Tell us a bit about how you think about innovation in your role at Indosat. So, so thank you, John. So what? Uh, I hope my voice is uh, louder now. So maybe uh, uh, so very good summary in terms of the innovation you see in Western markets. Uh, we in in less developed markets or markets where the populations are much larger, but the average spend per person is much smaller. I think we see a lot of the innovation which we would need to see. And the thing in only a few of the uh, KTV platform is how do we get the KTV platform to adopt other mechanisms to build customers? Because the larger brands are still only looking at credit cards as a way for as a way for customers to pay, and that really would put hold the growth in markets like ours. So the first innovation, apart from the product innovation, will be something quite simple, which is how do these new, how do how do TV platforms looking at a, looking at new markets, can they adopt newer payment options, lower cost payment options, options payment options which are more widely adopted, more than credit cards to actually start charging their customers. So that's the first innovation, which I think the uh, TV platforms will have to adopt. And, and those, for example, I think or Hook, the local platform over here, who have been more innovative in terms of adopting uh, the payment mechanisms, have been more successful. Uh, the main point I'd like to make. It's an interesting observation, Prashant, I think, about some of the narratives that are driving innovation in different markets. Was it Sorry, was there another point you wanted to make? No, I was uh, that. I had a few other points to make, this is the first one. I mean, the second point is more uh, a mindset issue, which I think should, over time, become a driver to innovation. Many of the uh, larger pay TV platforms are still looking at the viewer markets in our part of the world. And one, similar to the older regulated uh, pay TV market from 10 years ago, where there were, say, one or two satellite providers in the market and maybe three or four cable providers. But today, when you go to a broadband platform, there are so, there's eight not regulated. Prashant, yeah. We'll on to the next and hope that Prashant can rejoin to the next slide and hope that Prashant can rejoin us shortly. So we've introduced the framework um, looking at these three different um, innovation areas. Let's move on and have a look now at how different operators around the world um, are delivering against these innovations. So on this slide you can see a graph which ranks the innovation portfolios um, of different TV operators around the world according to how they've innovated across these different um, these three different areas. So the dark blue area at the bottom is innovative TV platform. Uh, so our far right category on the previous slide. The light blue um, is innovation in online services. So TV operators that are extending the reach of their film and TV offerings um, and other offerings indeed um, off the platform. And then um, the major adjacencies. Uh, so areas like um, IoT, smart home offerings or advanced advertising. And I think the first finding we wanted to flag is obviously just to highlight that when we look across the 231 operators across our sample here, we see that advanced TV platforms are, much, are, are far and away the most common area of innovation. So almost every pay operator across our sample has some sort of advanced capability deployed um, across their platform, whether that's um, an advanced, uh, a different way, of, a novel way of innovating in pricing or content, whether that's sort of advanced capability like 4K or voice search, or whether it's some sort of original new content offering on their box. The low area is, is less common, so a certain number of operators have deployed online services. The most common of these by far is TV everywhere, so extending the reach of core pay TV services across different platforms and devices. 
And for yellow, the asymmetries innovation is much less common, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, it's really only a relatively small number of operators um, most advanced who are reinvesting heavily in those adjacent areas. So what explains um, this variation? Well, um, there are many, many different factors, obviously, which explain why a particular operator may or may not um, have invested and um, delivered some sort of innovation, um, in a new product or service across its footprint or um, into an adjacency. So we think this framework that we presented on this slide is a good way of anticipating this. There are two really important things here that matter. First of all, is the service provider's skill, resources, and capabilities. So, generally speaking, um, larger operators um, have a greater innovation capability or capacity. Um, obviously, operators can transform their ability to innovate by working with best of breed technology providers. And we have multiple examples of that where companies have collaborated with technology providers who have global reach to do services into. Um, that they might otherwise have been unable to deliver. The second key factor is the presence of underlying market enablers. So it tends to be the case that large, wealthier markets with more broadband and often with a higher competitive intensity, markets in which we see providers having a greater set of incentives to innovate. Um, uh, so that, for example, would suggest to us that markets like the US or some of the more advanced Asian markets would be markets where we would expect to see operators investing more heavily in innovation, both because they have the capability, but also because the underlying enablers support that investment. So we look at the rankings of the different operators around the world. As you can see, it's quite a messy picture. Um, this graph shows on the bottom axis the scale of the KTV service provider being ranked, so their estimated financial scale based on their ARPUs and the number of households they have, the number of subscribers they have. On the left-hand side, we have their innovation score. As you can see, different operators at different areas and different levels of scale are innovative. However, the largest operators um, on the top right um, of the graph tend to be the major um, international operators or US businesses in particular. Um, companies like DirecTV, Comcast, major national operators like Sky and Deutsche Telekom, and some interesting examples like Rogers and Starhub. So if you want to come in here and talk a little bit about the Starhub um, exception, Starhub really stands out on this list because it's a small-scale operator, but it's most innovative in the market. Absolutely, and um, we, we've worked with, uh, with Starhub for uh, over a decade uh, in, uh, in a, uh, evolving and uh, Improving the services that uh, that they provide to their subscribers, and for instance, we uh, we uh, recently launched uh, Netflix as an application on the set top box, and uh, and also help move uh, a lot of the services to IP over uh, cable infrastructure. Uh, not to forget as well the work that uh, the start has done on um, on in terms of uh, in terms of action on the data side and. And, uh, advertising, uh, so they have really uh, managed to um, to to leverage uh, relationships with vendors as well as uh, uh, innovative technologies to to drive their platform forward and stay a leader in uh, in a relatively small market, but a very dynamic one. And um, and, and I think it's a good, uh, definitely a good case of uh, of an operator that had a, a vision and was uh, able to to smartly execute on it and uh, and, and deliver a uh, an advanced TV service um, to uh, um, to Singaporeans. Really example, Simon, I think of how um, scale isn't necessarily the be all and end all determining whether or not an operator can innovate. Jump on then and dive down into the data in a little bit more detail. Um, well, if we start by looking across the different regions. Uh, this is just drilling down a bit more into the data to show you the regional distribution of innovation scores. And what we see here relatively clearly is that on the left hand side of our graph, it tends to be the major uh, US operators 
who have the most innovative or far-ranging portfolios and um, auction scores as we've deemed these in our analysis. Um, closely followed by EMEA, and then as we look at um, the developing markets, the operators tend to be a little bit less advanced in terms of the breadth of their portfolios, partly because they're still seeing very high levels of growth in their core pay TV products. The other thing that's worth pointing out here is that the range of scores in each region is very wide. So, in other words, the most innovative providers in Latin America, for example, are there with some of the operators in North America when it comes to scorings. And when we look at a very diverse region like here in the middle, we have a very wide range of different portfolio scores by operator. There are lots of innovative operators around the world, I think, is the key we would like to flag here. But general, the weighted averages suggest that North American operators are a bit more advanced in some areas, particularly in the adjacent cities. So drilling down into that data in a bit more detail, we'll now take you through some of the findings in relation to particular innovation areas, so you can see how different operators around the world are innovating. So this data set here shows how operators are innovating on their top of boxes, on their top of the range set of boxes. And what we think here is very much that all around the world with operators who are very, very advanced innovating on their set of boxes and offering really advanced set of boxes to their end customers. So things like IP connectivity or PR or recording capabilities are widely deployed by operators all around the world. There are standout areas where operators in North America are a bit more advanced. I think the most useful one is third-party applications. I think that's demonstrating that the US market when it comes to internet products and services is a bit more advanced than some of the markets around the world. For example, in APAC and LATAM, we have more of a mobile-first experience, which mends itself a bit as well to the set of the box. On. This now looks at the range of service providers offering OTT services across our sample. And again, we see that in the advanced markets, um, operators almost ubiquitously now are offering a wide range of OTT services, both TV and anyway services to their existing subscribers, but also standalone OTT products, um, which are a bit more widely deployed. The everywhere in particular really is pretty much ubiquitous now around the world. Most big operators in most advanced markets are offering these services. When we get down to the other end of the scale, app-based KTV is much less common. So the industry is still very much hanging on to the set of box in many respects. It's difficult still in most markets to buy KTV services purely through an application um, rather than actually taking super premises equipment. And the area where we really see some big variations um, adjacent services. So when you look here at the data, it's suggesting that North American operators are far and away the most advanced in offering um, things like security and home automation to their customer bases. We think there are a number of reasons for that. Um, first of all, the scale of those operators. So the providers, um, the big MVPDs in the US market, can target the investment in those services and offer them often tens of millions of households. So even quite low levels of penetration um, for those services across those bases can deliver a sizable return. Because also, it relates to um, demand and the competitive environment. So we've seen operators in those markets responding to investments by companies like Google and Amazon in delivering home automation or what services um, be stimulating demand across those markets. And now if we look at where operators, where, where our sample of pay TV providers see the major opportunities for their companies going forward, we really see here that, that most operators around the world still see innovating on the core set-top box platform. So the 72% interested in U.S. data price and package content, the 73% who are looking at new types of content offering, and then multi-screen TV everywhere, um, 76% as main opportunities for the, the particular providers in their particular markets. Um, Prashant, I just wanted to bring you in here again. Um, when you look at um, the data presented here, um, what kind of um, lessons do you derive um, from, from your experience in the 
about innovation opportunities. Are these sorts of areas you see yourself looking to innovate? Yeah, I think many of them uh, would be I don't believe uh, as a, we are also a telco, so some of them are more relevant to the telecom operations than to pay TV. Uh, I think many of them would be similar. The adjacencies uh, issue would be seen on, not because we see less of uh, potential, but I think cost-wise will not be as competitive is on smartphone and IoT. I think that is one area uh, you know, where smaller, nimble local players who do not pay minimum wage can you know, offer the same kind of services to price. So, so now it's not an area we are focusing on, but on the rest of the areas, I think the focus is, uh, is there. So on some areas more than others, multi screen is a, is a key driver for, uh, for us, both the people that we have, obviously, got the cellular side of business and the fixed side. So it's quite important. Uh, we also have a, a local uh, real-time booking exchange in a uh, demand-side platform. So both on the mobile side, like placement ads or television, it's the real-time data piece is quite important. So those are the two big drivers for us. Uh, in terms of partners, so we have the distribution as well as payment platforms are the big drivers of innovation. That's cool. Brief question. Do you have a view on why the, the data suggests that the major U.S. pay TV providers are so advanced in deploying um, home security and home automation type services? What, what makes that market particularly attractive for offering those sorts of products? I'll give a quick answer view of the market. Sure. In many of the Asian markets where, where there is strong TV penetration, they are uh, slightly more affluent households. And the more affluent households would typically have full time made as So from the point of view of security, there's always, always a first at home. Right. The only key situation in a lot of demand for are, uh, are home snooping or monitoring satellites. But, but many of them are available off the shelf. You can go into a shop, it's quite easy to install and customers are, you know, other well, Let's jump on then and talk a bit about some of the challenges that providers um, perceive themselves to be experiencing. We asked our sample again of the kinds of challenges that they felt were particularly important and a wide range of responses here in terms of the things that companies flag as being particularly difficult. However, if we look at the left-hand side, what would really stand out here are, first of all, a lack of skills and capabilities internally. 58% um, of our sample saw this as one of the most important innovation challenges. Difficulties measuring return on investments. So there's a lot of uncertainty associated with many innovation opportunities, which can be an unpalatable thing for some companies to accept. Thirdly, and this is a theme that came up um, again and again, access to content rights. Many pay TV providers perceive themselves to be inhibited in their ability to innovate by the fact that they generally don't own content. They license content from providers. And if they want to offer some sort of new TV Everywhere service or perhaps a download own offering or something like that, they have to go back to the content providers um, and create extended access to those rights. And often those, those negotiations can be time consuming and often quite difficult. And that can be a real barrier um, that inhibits the willingness of many operators to really act in this area. So, can we bring in here? Um, what kinds of uh, external challenges um, are you seeing? And what do you think the solutions to those challenges are? Uh, I think you, you just mentioned an important important point which uh, access to content rights and uh, and to uh, especially uh, 4k content with the new uh, uh, content protection guidelines uh, in this an area whereas uh, uh, obviously specialists in content protections were often solicited and uh, and we do have solutions to help uh, service providers uh, overcome these challenges and be able to bring 
the best content, the best experience across uh, different devices, either uh, broadcast, streaming, or uh, offline consumption. And, uh, and, and definitely these are areas where um, service providers can can leverage a, uh, their uh, vendors to um, to uh, overcome these uh, these these challenges. Uh, some of the other ones we have on these charts are uh, more internal, but yet again, through uh, I would say the expertise and know-how we have working with uh, service providers around the world, we can also uh, we're also in a position to share some of the best practices and insights and. Uh, and uh, and techniques that's, uh, that that uh, other firms have uh, been able to uh, to to deploy to, to really um, make themselves more agile and, and innovative and be able to uh, uh, to go forward in developing new uh, new uh, platforms and services. The really exciting things about the pay TV industry is that in many cases pay TV companies don't compete with one another unless. So tremendous opportunities for sharing experiences and even collaborating to bring new products and services to market in some cases. Um, I wanted to ask you briefly in, in your capacity at Indosat, what kind of practical advice would you give to a pay TV company looking to become more innovative? Are there best practices or things that you've done at Indosat which you think have worked particularly well? For uh, so I think we have you know because we have two platforms the fixed uh, uh, broad platform with uh, the TV added on and we have the cellular platform I think the uh, the first day is for most uh, providers who have a number of content channels they should look at multi platform uh, because even in home we sell our TV propositions we see almost an equal number of hours of viewership on on smart devices and on the television so. I would say a multi-platform strategy would be quite important. And the second is no brainer but many large uh, platforms seem to forget is local content is absolutely critical. So I would say these are the two quick things for a platform to focus on. Do you have any advice in terms of organizational models or operating models? Do you organize yourself to ensure that you can successfully innovate in a very fast-changing market? So we've adopted a number of, uh, of commercial models depending on the customer segment to go after. So the commercial model has to reflect a few things. One, the kind of content the customer wants to watch. And the second is how much money she or he is willing to pay. So these are the two models which we need to be very clearly understood. Along with what the, uh, the one-year strategy of the, of the platform is. So for example, if the wants to grow its customer base in the first year, then it should be willing to take the risk on the, the revenue side to grow the customer base, something like iPhone, for example, has done in this market. If the platform's view is it wants to grow revenue from day one, then it has a completely different model to adopt, which would be uh, you know, a premium model which would be the most uh, uh, successful. So you have a very low fee to reel the customer in, and then you have a paper view or a paper uh, download. Good tools process. Then a different model to Right, jump on in and talk a bit about some of the I'm sorry? And and, and bring the discussion to end because I think we have some questions coming in which we can try to tackle. So to come these challenges, um, there are four priorities, four innovation priorities, which emerged from the research we felt are really important priorities for pay TV providers to address some of the challenges and, and the innovation imperatives that we identified early on. So first of all, um, the first one to flag is the importance of establishing strong customer and market insight capabilities. It's also said that innovation starts from a really clear understanding of the needs, preferences, wants, tastes of the customer base or of target customers who are looking to attract um, to your base. We found it's very important for companies to have a good visibility of how their customers are behaving 
um, can mean with advanced data and analytics capacities on our platforms, but also the good visibility of what's happening across the wider market. Similarly, and something that we alluded to earlier in this presentation, um, the importance of deploying platforms and processes that can support faster innovation. The industry has definitely moved forwards in a really positive way to deploy platforms that support faster deployment of advanced services. Within our research, that there are still challenges from an internal process point of view. Companies, on the one hand, who are looking to combine agile development methodologies with, say, waterfall techniques, which can lead to internal complications. Continuing to, to, to develop and invest in these processes feels very important. Thirdly, building strategic partnerships with technology suppliers and startups. Um, the page is served by a very wide range of innovative technology suppliers, many of whom, as Simon said, have experience of working with lots of different PayTV companies around the world. Developing really close partnerships with those companies feel like a real priority. And then, with the content issues earlier, um, building more collaborative partnerships with um, content and channel providers can really help to unlock innovation making things like um, TV everywhere a much accessible area of opportunity if you have flexible and creative partnerships with your content providers as a pay TV platform. Is there anything you wanted to add at this point? Or should we close with some thoughts about the market in 2020? Thoughts about the market in 2020? So, Perhaps I'm going to bring you in here again for a, a final few thoughts. When you look at your market and you think about the kinds of innovation opportunities available to pay TV businesses in the region, what do you think will look most different in 2020 or 2025? Where do you see major new growth opportunities? What do you think will really transform the industry over the next five to ten years? Emerging markets, uh, pay TV penetration is really very low. Well. And even in India, where they talk about high TV yes. penetration, is actually, you know, free TV uh, mastery in as pay TV. So, first, secondly, growth from the growth going forward will be just more people willing to pay for content. And that will come through interactive platform work. So, I see that as being a massive growth opportunity. So, I tell you, might come from a mix of models. One model is where you charge customers for every video watch per month, but can also come from sharing cabbage share revenue with, uh, with broadband providers. So I think the big, the big driver for revenue growth should be more customers coming in. They may come in at a much smaller price point than the but the volume is very small. Right, we now have some time for some uh, questions um, from some of the webinar participants. Um, yeah. Janice, what questions do we have? Yeah, thanks. thanks, John. So we have a couple of questions from, from our audience. I'll, I'll start with probably the, the, the most pressing one, the most interesting one. Uh, someone asked, what, what is your idea uh, for small bakery providers, in your opinion? Uh, John, uh, do you want to... Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Could you could you repeat? I'm sorry. I'm... So the question: What innovative ideas, in your opinion, are uh, more important for small the operators? But the ideas for the smaller operators. How um, do you innovate? Yeah, obviously, for uh, for the other providers, there is uh, a challenge and a scale challenge we uh, mentioned earlier in the presentation. Uh, what we've seen in uh, uh, I think in the overall research program, is some of the, 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 the small players have managed to uh, to, um, to make uh, strides ahead by uh, really focusing on uh, on, on the uh, uh, differentiators in, uh, in in the respective markets. Uh, often, uh, extend capabilities of the core TV platform at first, and uh, in focusing on that, and that uh, implies uh, developing uh, 
more advanced uh, services uh, in terms of uh, uh, watching on-demand uh, content, television, and uh, and uh, and time shifting capabilities, as well as the multi-screen abilities to uh, to um, consume the content across uh, more with more flexibility across a number of screens. And that's definitely uh, one of the focus areas for a number of the smaller players. And then the road to success will definitely uh, involve working in in, uh, in close partnership with uh, uh, with uh, key vendors, so that uh, um, they can bring these new capabilities uh, quickly to market, uh, leveraging expertise and uh, and know of the vendors, and making sure that. Uh, uh, they, they stay focused on uh, on the end result and, and delivery of new uh, new capabilities uh, with a fast time to market. Do you have anything to add here? In terms of well, I think the question was the most innovative. You know, the one which I find the most uh, interesting is a, a small pay TV platform in this market has on, on the cellular side given its content away for free, so you can watch. Uh, you can watch program, the same program or you know or historical programs for free, and the way they make money is two. One is they drive traffic towards the uh, towards customers watching the program on the television, and second is they take a share of the data traffic generated. So I find mm. this model to be quite quite unique. Uh, so drivers want to move customers to watch uh, from from the, from the phones to watching the full program from their television, and the second is make Money from the additional traffic generated to the telephone operator. So, okay, That's really interesting. I think Sam makes a really good point there that as the world of pay TV and telecoms converge, we see real proliferation of opportunities to bump package content in ever more creative and innovative ways um, as companies look to differentiate themselves in markets. So, when we look, for example, at some of the more advanced markets in um, Europe and the Americas. I think we're starting to see um, operators like Verizon or Sky, which just launched its mobile services this week, um, doing some really interesting things um, in terms of incentivizing consumers to take up particular comms packages by doing clever things with content, with data, um, with subscription apps, and so on and so forth. Uh, good question related to the OTT services. So, referring to the fact that around a third of pay TV providers that we that we looked into have already launched OTT services, such as the, uh, now TV from Sky or, or, or DirecTV services. The question is whether whether you think this is a saturated market, or do you have to see more of these launches over the next coming coming years? And if you differ. Yeah, quickly on uh, on on, the, uh, on this topic, I think uh, it's definitely uh, an answer to a market opportunity in terms of uh, reaching a segment of the market that uh, was reluctant to subscribe to uh, a full package, and uh, and and there was uh, definitely in in most events, uh, TV market because at, at this stage in North America and Europe, uh, there are windows of opportunities for going after uh, uh, a segment of, of the population that is looking for a uh, more focused, targeted type of package distributed over the OTT uh, and, uh, and potentially complemented by uh, an asphalt service. Uh, we expect that such a, a trend will also uh, become a reality in other parts Parts of the world where there is uh, broadband available, uh, and and it is um, definitely a strategy that will still keep going in, in the years to come. Uh, at some point, uh, obviously, um, its segment it will reach its uh, it, it, its uh, its limit, and uh, and and we'll have to see then what uh, will be the future uh, strategy. Beyond growing, uh, growing that um, that type of service for uh, uh, for a group of uh, consumers, uh, the fact that it's scaling up uh, OTT delivery is uh, is also uh, uh, 
uh, something that uh, operators will be able to leverage uh, into the future as well. Economics really good points, uh, and we it's early days for many of these service offerings um, that, that are being launched, the standalone services. I think we might like to see future launches restricted to markets with um, good broadband. Uh, it's obviously the underlying enabler for extending your footprint and delivering these services to new subscribers. I think one part is there are two parts of the market handle which I think are still um, relatively um, urgent territory or present some opportunities. First of all, um, thematic packages. So many services that are offered um, or being at the moment are stripped down pay TV services. So they offer a dual portfolio of services, um, but potentially look like a, a skinny bundle, um, like a traditional pay TV offer. We're starting to see launches now is in um, thematic services. So specialist sports services, kids services, um, and so on, which target a particular sub demo. I think the second part of the market, which we sort of touched upon earlier, which is still has tremendous scope, is um, mobile services. In the markets, we're seeing mobile video consumption um, climb very dramatically um, in terms of its proportional traffic. We haven't yet seen large numbers of mobile specific um, pay TV bundles or OTT services being offered. Some, but not that many. So I think in two areas we will continue to see launches, both by pay TV platform providers, but also by content owners, rights owners, companies with libraries that are looking for new to monetize that content. Yeah, and one final question, Jeff, and then we'll move on to I can pick that up. It's, it's a really interesting question. So, um, advanced TV and advertising capabilities um, are one big adjacencies that we've been looking at. And it's relatively uncommon across the market. So, across our sample, a small number of operators have featured portfolios of advanced TV and video advertising offerings. Some companies that offer uh, have an ad sales capability, uh, like a Comcast or a Verizon or a Spark, they have an in-house ad sales team. Second, they're offering targeted addressable advertising across TV and online video inventory. And thirdly, they offer some sort of linear addressability. Um, but it's a time of operators who have that, that full portfolio globally. Um, a, a greater proportion, almost half of our sample, have no advanced advertising capability at all. When it comes to um, developing advanced advertising offerings around OTT services, it's really in first party data. So the unique asset that PT providers have is the content that they're offering across their OTT offerings and can be consumed by people who are logged in. And that means that you can typically provide some sort of targeted addressable capability bring ads targeted at particular um, post codes or zip codes or addresses or geographic regions and you have also the ability to target ads based on content consumption habits or even against, um, other data if it's available so things like household income this obviously varies quite widely by market but yeah, I think the pay to providers is finding ways to to leverage data to support addressability and advanced targeting. Thanks, John. I think we're almost out of time. We should probably move into just our closing remarks now. I want to talk a little bit about um, next steps to the Pay Innovation Forum. Uh, absolutely. So, uh, as we mentioned at, at the beginning, this program. Uh, uh, was launched in 2016, and uh, we're looking at uh, extending it in 2017 with a uh, second season. Uh, so there will be uh, uh, further sessions that will be organized in major uh, cities around the world to uh, interact with uh, industry professionals and, uh, and make sure that we can uh, uh, keep uh, listening and, and capturing insight from uh, from uh, different 
players and uh, and, and keep looking at uh, innovation areas that uh, are driving uh, the industry forward and uh, identify some of the key challenges to uh, to be successful in that uh, fast evolving space of, uh, of pay TV. Thanks, Simon, and thanks, John, Rashawn. Thanks, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know, this uh, webinar will also be available uh, to online after after today. So for, for, yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll just give you the link, and and hopefully it will be helpful uh, to, to have a look at it after. Thanks again, and have a great day ahead.